Hello and welcome to a walkthrough of the Unreal Engine 5.1 starter template for AT Levels Community Metasites Challenge. In this video, we'll go over the basic components of this template and how you can use it and change these components to build your experience. Enough talk, let's see what the template actually looks like. The main level is called, well, main level and it should already be open when you open up the project for the first time. However, if you want to find it again, you can go over to content levels and there it is. Ignore the other levels in this folder for now. Let's hit play. This is our player with Unreal Engine's default mannequin. At the bottom left, we can see a guide for all the in-game controls. So we can move around with WSD, jump with space, and we can even toggle stats like frame rate. Now, back in the scene, there's a boss up ahead that's spewing projectiles at us. These projectiles damage us, as we can see from our health bar at the top left. We also see the boss's health bar at the top right. Now what we need to do is we need to shoot at the boss from this cannon. However, for that we need two things. First, we need to go around and collect ammo, which we can see in the bar below our health bar. So here I've grabbed the ammo, we grab some health as well. Heading back to the cannon if i go over here and try to fire it it doesn't work because it is unpowered uh, as noted by this light up so we need to follow this power line to the power supply here turn it on and now we should be able to fire at the boss there we go the boss's health is going down oh boy oh boy it is defeated can move forward this bridge forms let's press this button over here and enter this final area where we are greeted with some nice fireworks display and we can move forward into this white door the player controls freeze and we are greeted with a thank you screen that is it so that's the gameplay experience a boss battle as you can probably tell, there is a fair bit of code in the background, but don't worry, it's all in blueprints. So it should be fairly easy to edit whether you are a programmer or an artist. If we take a look at all the things we have interfaced with in our gameplay, we can see that each one of them is a blueprint, which is an individual piece of art and logic that describes how it looks and how it operates. These blueprints can be found under content blueprints where they are split further into different categories so under the actors folder we have everything that can be placed in the level along with some helper blueprints here and there for example the boss the interactable and even our cannon here further we also have a dedicated folder just for the player in this video, we'll only briefly go over these blueprints and for a detailed breakdown, you can check out the documentation which is linked in the description below. Now, the best way to start looking at these pieces is by looking at the code for the actual level. What controls the level? What makes it run? For this project, the overall control logic is split between the level blueprint for the main level, which you can find over here. There we go. And the game mode, which is under here. Now we have split up the logic based on what was the easiest for us since we weren't worried on having a super optimized code base. But if you're working on a larger project, you can be more mindful of that. Now in the level blueprint, we have hooked together interactables like the weapons, the shields, and even events like what happens if the weapon breaks down what happens when the boss dies in the game mode we have some functionality about the player death player respawn and some health and ammo management here this game mode is set as the default game mode for the project and also has the player controller class and the default pawn class set up to our custom blueprints which we'll look at next now generally Games have a clear distinction 
between the player controller and the player pawn. However, for this project, we have again split up the code based on whatever was the easiest. So if you want to change something about the player, it's best to have both of these blueprints open for completeness. Or you could put your logic just inside one of the two. For now, the player controller contains most of the input handling under input graph. So we have move, sprint, interact. We can also change the base speed and our sprint speed from here. The controller also contains line trace and sphere trace for interactables, HUD management, and also some functions about player death and player respawn. The player pawn, on the other hand, contains stuff like toggling the first person view, health and ammo management, damage, and some extra inputs. Now let's take a look at the boss, which as we know is under blueprints, actors, there it is. The boss is nothing but a spherical mesh, a sphere collider, and this particle system. Now you can change all of this. You can also add your own things to it. You can also edit the core logic of the boss, including uh, the boss's three types of attacks and what happens when it takes damage. A lot of these variables you can also change directly in the scene for quicker testing. So if we come over here, select the boss, we can see we can change the boss's max health and some other things over here. The boss also contains an interface. So if we come over here, this interface, iDamageable, which outlines functions for all damageable actors in the scene. So this is also part of our player. There we go. There are three types of projectiles in this project. So let's take a look at them. There is one base projectile, which is a physics based projectile. So it operates only according to its velocity and gravity. And there are two child projectiles, which do a few things differently. Let's open them all up. There we go. All the projectiles are just a sphere. Projectile straight just launches straight according to a launch vector, ignoring gravity. Projectile tracked, on the other hand, travels along a set track so something like this these white lines are tracks along which projectile track can travel so it has a reference for the track these projectiles are used by the boss and our cannon now there are two types of cannons as well a base cannon and a track cannon each of these corresponding to one type of projectile the base cannon just like projectile base defines a lot of common functionality and the child the tracked cannon changes a few things here and there the base cannon launches the projectile base which if you remember is a physics based projectile and the tracked cannon as the name says launches projectiles that are tracked so this also has a variable for the track both cannons have a bunch of public variables that you can play with in the editor. We also have a power system in the project which you can use to hook up certain devices to require power before they do their thing. There are three components to the power system. A power supply like this one here which needs an output pipe to carry the power and finally a power consumer. All consumers need to have the interface iPowerable on them. So if we take a look at this weapon here, go to its base, we can see it has iPowerable on it. This is why we could toggle power on it. Same is the case with the shields here. If I open up the shield here, I can see it also has iPowerable. Side note, it also has iDamageable. So that's fun. Using this system, you can build any kind of simple power-based puzzles to add to your gameplay. You can chain together power systems, you can have multiple output pipes, and you can even build complex systems like this power supply here, which switches between its output pipes. Let's talk about widgets now. These are the UI elements that are present on screen. We have three main types of widgets in the project. 
the HUD widget, which is the player HUD with the pointer image in the center, the health bars, the guide here, exit prompt, which is essentially the pause menu, and finally, the thank you screen, which appears at the end of the game. You can modify these three widgets however you want. You can reskin these, you can go in and even change their functionality. You can reskin even individual components of these widgets like the objective widget here which right now is just a box with some text on it you can flavor all widgets however you want finally we have a simple objective system in the project when we play the game we can see three objectives in the top defeat the boss get ammo and power up the cannon these objectives are managed by the objectives manager which needs to be in the scene is there and each of these actors can push their own objectives to the list so if we open up this one for example and search for objective sorry let's go to the base yeah search here objective yeah you can see that we call add new objective and remove objective using this string here power of the cannon if we open up this function here which open up the function library which you can also go to from utils function library here we have a bunch of functions here regarding adding new objectives and removing objectives now you may change the objectives however you want you can have more actors give you more objectives or you cannot use the objective system at all it's there if you need it and that's it that brings us to the end of this short walkthrough for more information be sure to check out the detailed documentation linked in the description below i hope this was helpful so that you can create some truly amazing things using this template all the best and see you